Welcome to this particular episode of uh, Doing a Business in Rwanda. In this edition, uh, we take a closer look at how our secondary schools in the country are embracing uh, the 21st century skills like technology in their day-to-day -day studies. I am your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. Rwanda's Ministry of Education launched educational technology platforms such as Microsoft, Zora Robotics, Keza Technology, or Genius Panda, and other platforms as an indication to schools that the government supports the use of technology. In the rollout stage, they will sign performance contracts with 150 schools. Eventually, the platforms will be introduced to all primary and secondary schools in the whole country. ICT is the present, also the future. So if you don't give them ICT skills, uh, you're denying them the future that they deserve because we live in the information age. And ICT skills are as vital as any other skill, whether it's numeracy or um, whatever other skills, uh, literacy, ability to learn and speak languages, and all that, it's as important as that. Actually, this is not a, a new phenomenon, but it is an attempt to more emphasize better implementation of competence-based curriculum, because that is provided for. ICT in schools, we know its importance. It is critically important that we know where we are going. But we are already there in terms of the 21st century skills that we want to build in our schools. The vision we have as a country uh, in order to reach uh, several attainments in terms of uh, skills, uh, capacity for our students and our country uh, needs that we move much more proactively use of technology. There are numerous efforts that have been put in place to improve children's access to basic education and it continues to unlock their potential by allowing them to dream beyond the imaginary. I had this dream since I was nine to ten years old. I wanted to study coding because uh, normally programming teaches you how to think, yes, how to think deep and also Programming is important because it helps you to innovate and solve global problems. You can solve any problem in the society with programming. So I also wanted to cause, I wanted to engage in robotics and artificial intelligence. I really loved them, so that's why I came here. Because there was, they have a program of embedded programming I found that they, they I have a large fit for studying robotics and artificial intelligence. So I feel like the government is really at a good stage in that they are trying to, to involve technology in the STEM in the same subjects, like today, we had a very much exposure to robotics, we had exposure to Microsoft Gaming. So I feel like, yes, we may not have reached at the stage where we can say we are perfect, but you know, slowly by slowly makes a bundle. So I feel like the government is really, really at a good stage of introducing technology. Like today, um, where we were working with the Zora robots personally, and it was really a good experience. You get to get out of the classroom and see what is outside the classroom, what outside the classroom can help me in what I want to do or what I want to be. Uh, as you see, we are in a world which is being developed by technology and coding will help us to improve our technology. And in Rwanda, this is the first school that has this coding. The, yeah, we can study coding here. So I choose to come here because I will get to learn more and will be able to help my country to improve in its technology. Normally, nowadays, Rwanda is importing a huge number of programmers and software developers to work in different companies and projects, whereas we Rwandans, we are also able to do that. In the efforts to bridge the digital gaps here in the country, the Ministry of Education partnered with Microsoft to roll out the tech-enabled STEM teaching program. We get to understand the type of partnership that this is. One of the things that we've managed to bring to, to Rwanda is what we call collaboration tools. Okay. 
the co collaboration tools, these are things like we call uh, the Office 365. This is the office. Um, when you're in a classroom, a teacher and a student, how do they collaborate? Okay. As I said before, most of the time when we were growing up, you're taught how to walk. Then when you get to school, you're told sit down and shut up. Then when you finish school, even the university, you go to work, you're required now to partner and work like a team. So when does it change from you have to do your things alone to becoming a team? So what Microsoft has come up with is with collaboration tools between teacher and student, or even schools and schools, student to students to even different regions. These are things like what we call Microsoft Teams. These are platform whereby the students can actually be able to do, uh, I mean a teacher can be able to do uh, a quiz sent to the students and the students do it and actually even marked automatically from the system. There's a way the teacher can also be able to evaluate the student and how they're progressing on a day to day. So we are using technology to be able to even predict what the student is able to do or not able to do. In conversations we had with some of the teachers, digital revolution has led to a boom in trials using information and communication technology in education. This has been applied both in and out of classrooms with the aim of improving the quality of knowledge and skills that are taught. But there is scarcity of programmers in not only in banking sector but also in like all sectors in Rwanda. Actually it's not only in Rwanda but part of Africa if you see. So you find jobs are many but programmers are not many and those who are there they are not well equipped so they are not up to the tasks that are given to them. So sure there is that gap and it's very big. Give, give them the basics of programming. We teach them the latest technologies that are used in different sectors and beyond <coughs> that we equip them with the latest uh, fac facilities like DevOps, CI, CD, so that when you leave the, the school, you go there and then you compete with others, you will be able to code, you will be able to introduce uh, best practices of a programmer and you will be able to use latest technologies to deliver your work. Maybe a girl has or any other person has an idea or a project but when you look around the opportunities are not yet that much diverse that you can, you can maybe sit on your software, yes you make it but look ahead there is no market. The market has not yet reached us like very very close so sometimes you find someone is seated at home with the software with that knowledge but they do not have where to exploit it in. With digital transformation being continuously positioned as a key enabler for the country's development agenda, what is needed to make the transition smooth? What investments should be put in place? And how inclusive are the opportunities present? When uh, the country or the ministry looks at this solution holistically, then they need to realize it's not about only the money. Okay? The issue is about the ministry right now is investing and paying. What is a teacher what is the school doing with the investment that has actually been given? So you find a lot of people probably don't know that there is these investments that have been made. And you find the ones who know are not evangelizing and telling people what they can be able to do. So what we've seen as a, the gaps and which we are working even with the ministry to do is a lot of the training, the teacher training, okay, across uh, the whole country. And we are doing and we are going like uh, district by district, being able to bring even teachers together and working out through a train the trainer program and training teachers who are able then even to train other teachers in schools. And uh, we are actually preparing now a program where we are going to have like model schools, where we are going to have like a hub where teachers can be coming, they get the training and then they can go across the other districts and being able to do that. So we are trying to break it down, taking it back to the normal common Mwanainchi and uh, realizing that they're actually the ones who need more of the technology than the people who are in Kigali because they look like they're disadvantaged. So they require this technology to bring them to that platform to a point whereby they have the same inclusion into the whole process of getting this done. Uh, most of the efforts that are being done is actually geared towards the young people. Um, if, for example, uh, we're investing heavily in telecommunication networks, it is primarily because of the young people who want them to have access, who want them to be able to be connected. Recently you saw the Ministry of ICT uh, starting an initiative which is Connect Rwanda with the aim of having a smartphone in the hands of each and every household. It's primarily to see how do we make sure these young people are growing up in an environment where they have got access to smartphones. 
Um, the, there's been a, a push on uh, digital literacy uh, through digital ambassadors that are spread across the country, again, under the ministry. Uh, this is the same concept like you have with the health sector where you have uh, health workers uh, in different parts of the country. So this time it's digital ambassadors. And their primary goal is to help bring digital literacy at low levels, wherever they are. And of course, the push into education itself. Approximately 122 million people will join the workforce by 2020. African companies are scrambling to fill positions with employees who possesses the right digital skills. Increasing excitement among the young people to get many of them involved is necessary. I think it's many things. It's not one thing. Um, so one, uh, when we're talking about uh, digitization, uh, one, you need to create an excitement around it. You need uh, the young people to be excited about it, to understand what it means. So there has to be awareness campaigning. Then secondly, you need to have tools that are available that they can access and able to learn. Three, if you're, talking about, if you're talking about education, then you have teachers, you have content that is able to be delivered digitally. Um, you have the environment that you create in schools that encourages, you know, uh, young people to try out things and learn on their own and so on and so forth. So uh, then you also look, you know, in people's homes, um, you know, how are these children being raised up? That's why, for example, uh, Connect One is trying to get a smartphone into each and every household. So it's a combination of many things that creates an environment which then produces uh, digital literate citizens and for the young people they're better empowered uh, to take charge of their future. That brings us to the end of today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. I was your host, Naringwa Fiona Mothoni. As always, do interact with us on Twitter at CNBC Africa to share your thoughts and feedbacks. Thanks for watching.